with the rich heiress for five years, just one day before our engagement. She lost her memory in a car accident. I took care of her meticulously, hoping she would remember our memories. But I overheard her conversation with her unforgettable first love. Of course, I pretended to have amnesia. I just didn't want to marry him. Until I really gave up on her and disappeared from her world completely. She appeared at my doorstep in a wedding dress, crying and begging. Hero, can you marry me again? The moment Rena Lin opened her eyes, I stood up in joy. Rena, you're awake. The doctor said she might never wake up again so I barely dared to sleep, afraid of missing any news. Finally seeing her open her eyes, I had a lump in my throat. I clumsily held her hand. How do you feel? Does it still hurt anywhere? I, who are you? I don't know you. I was cut off mid-sentence. Rena said coldly, dropping this sentence. I was stunned, unable to believe my ears, forcing a smile. My voice trembled slightly. Rena, don't joke like that. I am your fiancé, hero. Rena's beautiful eyes showed a hint of disbelief. She suddenly shook off my hand, her expression angry, don't lie to me, my fiancé is Ryu Meng. Hearing this, I was stunned, Ryu Meng. I dug out this name from my memory, he was Rina's former fiancé. The Lin and Meng families once had an engagement, they grew up together, perfectly matched in social status, just when everyone thought they would be together forever. Meng suddenly went bankrupt, and the Lin family unilaterally announced the annulment of the engagement. Their engagement was left unsettled, facing Rina's cold eyes. My bewildered gaze finally fell on the ring on her middle finger. My eyes brightened. No, Rena, look, we are already together. I pulled her hand. The ring shone brightly under the light. I stammered to explain, while Rena's expression grew more impatient. Smack, the ring was thrown to the ground by her. Rena looked at me coldly, speaking word by word. I don't care who you are. Get out now. I only want Ryu Meng. The doctor said Rena lost her memory due to the trauma from the car accident. This was the fifth time she had kicked me out of the hospital room, and behind the door was her angry voice. Get out. I said I don't want to see you. Her friends stood in the room, looking at each other in confusion. It's so strange. Rena remembers everyone but has forgotten me alone. She even treats me quite badly. The door creaked open, and Anna came out. Hero, don't be mad. She has amnesia now. It's normal for her to be a bit temperamental. She just forgot about me. My eyes darkened, and I smiled at her. I understand. As long as she takes care of herself, Anna looked at me, hesitant to speak. After a while, she said softly, how about bringing Ryu Meng over? Hero, don't get me wrong. The doctor said it might help stabilize her emotions and help her recover sooner. Her voice was a bit stammering, as if she also felt that this suggestion was a bit rude. After all, I am Rina's fiancé. I didn't say anything. Turning to look at Rina through the window, she was wrapped in bandages. Her eyes read, I just want Ryu Meng. Bring him to me. The always proud heiress now sounded so sorrowful. After a moment, I heard my own hoarse voice say, All right. I entered the hospital room once again. This time, Rena was exceptionally calm. She looked me up and down. She spoke softly. Hero, why would I want to marry you? Because we were in love. Because you once loved me. I opened my mouth, my fingertips turning white from clenching them. But I couldn't say a word. At this moment, a man walked in. Seeing him, Rena's eyes lit up. Ryu, you're here. Ryu Meng arrived quickly. He shoved my shoulder aside and looked at Rina tenderly. Rina, I heard you got hurt. Rina pouted, nodding pitifully. It hurts so much, and I still get harassed by a bad man every day. It's obvious who the bad man refers to. I swallowed my bitterness and silently stepped aside. Ryu Meng suddenly walked up to me. He looked down at me. Did you hear that? Rina doesn't want to see you. Be sensible and leave on your own. He said it so matter-of-factly. I took a deep breath. Mr. Meng. You should know that I am her fiancé now. Before Ryu Meng could speak, Rina suddenly looked at me. Her expression was filled with disgust, and she smirked contemptuously. Then let's cancel the engagement. I never acknowledged you as my fiancé. The mental strength I had been holding up finally collapsed. I stared at her blankly. For a moment, I even wondered if she had really lost her memory. My body trembled, and I spoke hoarsely. Rina, please don't treat me like this. I couldn't stand seeing Rina's look of disgust every day, avoiding me like the plague. At least, at least don't hate me so much. It was almost a humble plea, but Rina just tilted her head. Her red lips slightly parted. She clearly and maliciously said, No, you make me sick just by looking at you. I was kicked out by the smug Ryu Meng. Listening to the two of them flirt inside the room, I leaned against the wall, clutching my chest in a daze. Inevitably, my heart began to ache painfully. I never thought Rina would say something about cancelling the engagement. Even during our hardest times, she never did. Back then. She had a falling out with her family, and I was going through the toughest period of my life. The two of us squeezed into a small rented room, 
Living in poverty, the heiress who had never had to work for money secretly took on a job without my knowledge, just to buy me a watch I had wanted for a long time on my birthday. The watch wasn't expensive, but it was quite a sum for us at the time. I didn't know how she found the job or how she saved up bit by bit. In the bone-chilling winter, I looked at her chapped, red hands, and cried with heartache, and she just smiled with her eyes curved, softly saying, because I really love you, but the Rena who loved me so much back then, today, with a cold face, told me to cancel the engagement and that I make her sick. Rena didn't tell me when she was discharged from the hospital. I saw her update on her social media, the ring Ryu specially bought. Everyone take a look, is it pretty? The accompanying picture was of her hand, with the ring on her middle finger particularly striking. Putting down my phone, I felt a bit dazed. The image of Rena throwing away the ring just a few days ago seemed still fresh in my mind. I didn't understand why amnesia would cause such a drastic change in someone's attitude, or maybe, she never loved me to begin with. I shook my head quickly, not daring to think further. Rena just has amnesia, I can wait, wait for her to remember everything little by little, whether it takes a year, ten years, or a lifetime. I returned to the marital home, only to find Rena unexpectedly in the living room. Seeing me, Rena's delicate face showed anger. Hero, I can't believe you would use such tactics, have you no shame? Suddenly being scolded out of the blue, I was stunned. I tried to calm her gently, Rena, I don't know what you're talking about. Her eyes were filled with hostility, and she threw a pillow at me. Stop pretending, you're the one who told my parents to break me up with Ryu and then trap me here. Hero, you're disgusting. Hearing this, I immediately understood. The Lin family didn't want Rena to have contact with Ryu Meng. I pressed my lips together, trying to explain, it wasn't me, I didn't say that, I, before I could finish, she cut me off, hero, Rena looked at me coldly, word by word, if you do this, don't blame me for being rude, she dropped this line and slammed the door on her way out, watching her back as she left, I silently clenched my fists, Rena came back reeking of alcohol, a tall man was supporting her, it was Ryu Meng, he held Rena intimately and placed her on the sofa, he glanced at the porridge I had left out to cool, Ryu Meng sneered and said, Rina was right, you really are a good dog, he walked up to me, eyes filled with disdain, tonight, Rina and I will use the master bedroom, would you mind giving us some space, I suddenly stood up, my anger almost turning into action, you dare try that and see what happens, I rushed forward, grabbed his collar, and punched him hard, he dared to take advantage of Rina's amnesia, Ryu Meng staggered back from my punch, groaning in pain, hero, this shout didn't come from Ryu Meng but from Rina on the sofa. I didn't know when she had woken up. Struggling to stand, she trembled with anger. Slap. A sudden slap landed on my face. My cheek instantly stung with pain, and I turned my head, unbelievingly covering my face. The grievance in my heart almost overflowed. Rina, I looked at her beautiful face, hoping to see a hint of pity. Unfortunately, there was none. Rina gritted her teeth, her face filled with hatred. How dare you hit Ryu? Who gave you the right? This slap is to repay him. My throat tightened, and I couldn't say a word. She carefully helped Ryu Meng up, leaving me with one last sentence. Hero, I really don't want to see you. Can't you just die? The two of them went upstairs. For some reason, I could clearly hear their intimate noises. I sat on the sofa, dazed and heartbroken. Rina, you will regret this. I muttered to myself. I entered the study, struggling to hold back the tears. On the desk lay a wedding dress. Rina once said that when she married me, she wanted the most unique wedding dress in the world. So, two months ago, I began designing this wedding dress. I hired the best teacher, and every stitch was sewn by hand. My hands trembled as I touched the RL design on the dress, and tears finally blurred my vision. We were so close to getting married. The men she once protected so fiercely was me. The next morning, I went to the kitchen to make her some hangover soup. Rina often had headaches the day after drinking heavily. So I asked an old Chinese medicine doctor for herbs and brewed the best hangover soup for her. I waited for a long time, but Rina didn't come down. I went upstairs and found her standing in the study. She quietly watched the wedding dress, her long hair covering her expression. I was stunned. Did she remember something? Suppressing my excitement, I spoke gently. Rina, what's wrong? Does your head hurt? She raised her head, looking at me expressionlessly. What is this? I let out a breath, following her gaze. This is the wedding dress I designed. When we were about to get engaged, you said you wanted a unique wedding dress. As I spoke, I couldn't help but choke up. Rina, please remember. Rina didn't say anything, and I thought she might be moved. Suddenly, she looked at me and said, Are you done? I was stunned. The next second, she picked up a utility knife and slashed at the wedding dress. Her movements were swift and filled with unmasked hatred. By the time I reacted, 
the wedding dress was already destroyed beyond recognition. Only then did Rina laugh heartily. Hero, the ring is gone. And now the wedding dress is gone too. She curled her lips, her smile malicious, so that damn engagement should be cancelled as well. Everything happened too suddenly. I closed my eyes, feeling inexplicably tired. Forcing a slight smile, I turned and left. Rina, you're tired too. Go back. Rina really hated me. I belatedly realized this. Outside the door, Ryu Meng was leaning against the wall. I stared at the scratch marks and kiss marks on his chest. They were glaringly red. Proof of how intense they had been last night. He glanced at me with pity. How pathetic. Don't long for things that don't belong to you. He seemed to think of something amusing. Took out his phone. And smirked. Since you're already so miserable, there's no harm in showing you. I took the phone with trembling hands. There were inappropriate photos and videos taken at some unknown time. The sight made my eyes instantly red with anger. Ryu Meng took back his phone and chuckled provocatively. If you want, I can send you a copy. As he passed me, he whispered in my ear, By the way, your wife was amazing last night. After saying that, he pushed me aside and entered the study, leaving me standing there, dumbfounded. The engagement party proceeded as planned. Mr. Lin approached me, pleading with me to marry Rina. If she were to break off another engagement, Rina's reputation would suffer. I was silent for a moment, then agreed. I didn't want Rina to be tainted with any bad reputation. To my surprise, Rina didn't react much to the engagement either. She accepted it very calmly. The engagement party was hastily arranged, and the wedding dress and ring were casually chosen. Standing at the wedding venue, I still felt a bit dazed. It felt like an orderly ceremony, not a real wedding. I wondered, was this decision truly the right one? Rina and I were not in the same room. The guests had all arrived, and I walked up to greet them with a smile. I should have been with Rina, but she hadn't come out yet. I thought she might not be ready. As time passed, it was time for the ceremony. Rina still hadn't appeared. Whispers began to spread among the crowd. Mr. and Mrs. Lin's expressions grew increasingly tense. I reassured them softly, glancing at the door from time to time. Rina would come. She had never lied to me. Rina couldn't possibly lie to me. Until the makeup artist who was dressing her rushed in. Something's wrong. Miss Lin is missing. The lively venue fell into a dead silence. The makeup artist stammered. I was halfway through doing Miss Lin's makeup when she suddenly said she needed to go to the bathroom. She didn't come back for a long time. When I went to look for her, I found she was gone. I could feel everyone's sympathetic eyes on me. Bitterness filled my mouth, and I forced a smile. In fact, when Rina had been unwilling to see me earlier, I had a premonition. I just didn't want to believe it. I didn't want to believe that Rina, who loved me so much, would do such a thing. I wanted to protect her reputation, but she didn't care about my dignity at all. I took a deep breath bowed to the guests, then nodded to Mrs. Lin. Let's find Rina first. I found Rina in an alley. She was in Ryu Meng's arms, whispering intimately. I heard Rina laugh softly. Her voice was charming and gentle. She said, Ryu, we can finally be together. Ryu Meng whispered something in her ear. She suddenly buried her head in his neck, laughing foolishly. I didn't lose my memory. I just fooled that idiot hero. I just don't want to marry him. A buzzing filled my head. I stood at the corner, my body starting to tremble. I finally understood why Rina's behavior had been so strange. I finally understood why she had forgotten only me. It was all fake. Everything was fake. The countless excuses I had made for her. In the end, they became the most fatal blow to my heart. I laughed softly. Grievance. Anger. Pain. All the emotions that should have been in me turned into one thing. Come. I closed my eyes. My nails unconsciously digging into my palms. It was time to end this. Mr. and Mrs. Lin also saw them. With Mrs. Lin's scream. Rina finally noticed me. A trace of discomfort flashed in her beautiful eyes before she replaced it with a vicious look. You saw. Perfect. Saves me from having to tell you again. Hero. I don't want to marry you. I. I interrupted her before she could finish. Looking at her calmly. Rina. Let's cancel the engagement. Rina was stunned. Her eyes widening slightly. She seemed surprised that I was the one to say it first. After a moment. She smirked sarcastically. Pretending to be magnanimous. Huh. Trying to play that game too. Just don't come crawling back to me later. I won't. I smiled. I never will again. Mr. Lin sighed deeply, unable to say anything about continuing the engagement. With the engagement cancelled, I moved out of the marital home. The thought of the traces Rina and Ryu Meng had left there made me feel disgusted. On social media, Rina often posted photos of herself with Ryu Meng. It was like she was flaunting triumphantly. Rina had always been like this. I shook my head and began to tidy up my new home, while packing. I unexpectedly found a photo album. It was full of photos we took in our rented apartment. I squatted down, staring at the album in a daze. Suddenly, 
I remembered why I liked Rina in the first place. I grew up with my grandfather. After my grandfather passed away due to an accident, I was taken back to the Mu family by a group of people. They said I was the lost child of Mr. Mu, but I knew what that really meant. I was an illegitimate child, the most unwelcome existence. In this circle, where everything was about interests, I was a thorn in everyone's side. After the family children found out my identity, they began to bully me mercilessly. I saw Rina at a party. She was wearing a princess dress, surrounded by admirers. She was the high and mighty princess, and I was the stray dog begging for scraps. During the party, while the adults were socializing, a group of children dragged me to a corner, leaving me lying on the ground like a dead dog. They kicked me and stomped on my face with their shoes, laughing all the while. Sometimes I thought, it would be better to die like this. After all, the only person who cared about me was gone. I slowly closed my eyes until I heard a soft, childish voice. What are you doing? The people around me suddenly stopped. Rina stood before me, looking down at everyone. I don't bully people, yet you dare to bully others in front of me. Are you challenging me? Rina's family background was strong, and her words scared the children so much that they scattered like birds. I stared at her, also a bit afraid, until those beautiful fox-like eyes looked at me. She reached out her hand to me. Get up, boys don't cry. Her tone was fierce, but her palm was warm and comforting. It was the first time I felt kindness from someone else. In an instant, tears rolled down my cheeks. Over the years, Rina had probably forgotten, and I never thought that we would end up like this. Dot a few days later, there was a banquet I couldn't avoid attending. Reluctantly, I found a female companion to accompany me. In the banquet hall, amidst the clinking of glasses, my companion held my arm intimately as we moved through the crowd. I wore a polite smile as I conversed with them. Smash. It was the sound of glass shattering on the floor. I paused and looked up. Rina was standing there, holding Ryu Meng's arm, staring at me in a daze. The glass had shattered at her feet. My companion gasped, and I looked away. Lowering my head to comfort her softly, a shadow fell over me. Rina was suddenly standing in front of me. Her face was pale, and her eyes were fixed on my companion's hand holding my arm. Who is she? I frowned, finding it somewhat inexplicable. That doesn't seem to be Miss Lin's concern. I looked at her calmly. Miss Lin, Rina repeated softly, her eyes confused. Sensing my companion's unease, I patted her shoulder to reassure her. I spoke to Rina indifferently. Miss Lin, please step back. You're scaring my companion. Only then did she sneer and glance up and down at my companion, laughing coldly. It seems your taste isn't that great now either. After saying this, she adjusted the hem of her designer dress, like a peacock showing off. I just looked at her coldly. I'll say it again. Miss Lin, please step back. She froze, her eyes widening in disbelief. Hero, how dare you talk to me like that? My patience exhausted. I exhaled and spoke clearly. Rina, I think you forgot how badly things ended between us. Don't appear in front of me. You better not make me hate you more. After throwing down these words, I took my companion's hand and walked away. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw Rina standing there in confusion, while Ryu Meng seemed to breathe a sigh of relief. The banquet continued, but Rina was nowhere to be seen. But that was no longer my concern. That evening, I got home and received a phone call. Hello. The background noise was a bit loud. Then, an arrogant female voice rang out. Hey, hero, come pick me up. It was Rina. I frowned. If there's nothing else, I'm hanging up. Hero, how dare you hang up on me? Don't you dare hang up. Her voice sounded drunk and clingy as she whined. I'm drunk. My head hurts. I took a deep breath. Rina, go find Ryu Meng if you're having a problem. Don't bother me. At that moment, a stranger's female voice grabbed the phone. Sorry, dude. This lady here had too much to drink and is bothering you. Rina continued to shout on the other end. No, it's Hero. It's Hero. After some chaos, something seemed to happen. The other end suddenly quieted down. I heard Rina ask softly, Hero, do you still love me? She must really be drunk. Hearing this, I almost laughed out loud. I spoke harshly. How could I? Just seeing you makes me sick now. The other end fell silent, and I could only hear shallow breathing. I just felt annoyed, expressionless. I hung up the phone. I've heard from others that Rina hasn't contacted Ryu Meng for several days. I'm not surprised. Rina has always been like this, kicking people away when she's tired of them. Until I saw her photo on social media, she was in a room, smiling brightly. The caption was, reconciled. I didn't understand what that meant, but the room in the background looked very familiar. I frowned. It was the marital home I had listed with the real estate agent. Why did Rina buy it? Could it be to commemorate her relationship with Ryu Meng? Late that night, it was raining heavily. Suddenly, there was a soft knock on the door. I got up and opened the door, seeing who it was. I was a bit surprised. 
It was Rena. She was drenched from the rain, her small body trembling slightly. My eyes fell on her clothes, and I was stunned. I immediately recognized the wedding dress she was wearing. It was the one I had painstakingly sewn by hand, the same one she had slashed to pieces. Now, the dress was miraculously intact again. On closer inspection, some of the stitches were clumsy, like they were sewn by a novice practicing. Hero. Rena's voice was thick with a nasal tone, her makeup a smeared mess. The always exquisite heiress looked utterly disheveled. Hero. She called out again, meeting my expressionless face. Rena's eyes were filled with tears. I shouldn't have done those things before. Can you give me another chance? I love you so much. Hero, will you marry me again? I quietly looked at her. The Rena who had once smiled so brightly in our rented apartment overlapped with the one standing before me. Yet my heart felt nothing. Not even a trace of resentment remained. I realized then that I truly didn't love her anymore. I sighed, taking a towel from the bathroom and tossing it to her. Just as her eyes lit up a bit, I spoke slowly. You expect me to marry you when you want, and throw me aside when you don't. Rena. Where in the world is it that easy? You should know by now. I don't love you anymore. Rena's face turned pale. She opened her mouth, trying to explain something, but I closed the door on her. Rena, we should have said goodbye a long time ago. Rena disappeared for a few days, but Ryu Meng contacted me. His voice was a bit hoarse. Hero, let's talk. At the coffee shop, I was a bit surprised when I saw Ryu Meng. He looked haggard, his handsome face showing signs of exhaustion. Gone was his previously arrogant demeanor. Seeing me, he gritted his teeth. What did you do to Rena to make her break up with me? I lowered my eyes and calmly spoke. You should ask Rena that, and tell her to stop bothering me. He trembled with anger, and when his gaze fell behind me, he was stunned. Rena, I turned around and saw Rena standing behind me, her eyes red. Seeing me look at her, Rena bit her lip. Her once bright voice was now dim. Hero, did he bully you? I looked at her coldly and shook my head. Rena stammered, if he bullies you, you can tell me. I. I interrupted her. No need. I'd prefer if both of you never appeared in front of me again. Rena trembled. Her eyes filled with pain. I got up to leave, and behind me, her choking voice called out. Does it mean that no matter what I do, you won't care anymore? I paused for a moment but walked away without looking back. It was a silent answer, because wrong is wrong. Late affection is cheaper than grass. Almost every day, I received long and short messages from Rena, expressing her regret and love. I tirelessly blocked all her accounts. After a period of silence, I heard news about Rena again. I didn't expect Rena to go this far. When I found out, she had already severed ties with her family. It wasn't just a tantrum or a quarrel. She had completely cut ties. She gave up her identity as a rich heiress and the life of luxury and wealth. I thought of the last message she sent me. If we could start over, would you forgive me? I didn't understand what she was trying to do. After leaving work, I found Rena standing at the company entrance. Seeing me, she stood up straighter, looking a bit nervous. She was no longer wearing those branded clothes. Just a simple white dress. Rena had never looked twice at such clothes before. I gave her a brief glance and frowned. What do you want? She lowered her head and handed me a lunchbox. I, have you eaten? I made this myself. I finally understood what she was trying to do. The heiress who never lifted a finger was now cooking for me. How ridiculous. Her face was full of an ingratiating look. Her eyes shining with hope. I paused. Took the lunchbox from her hand. The next second. I threw the bag and lunchbox into the trash can. I won't eat it. Don't come again. Instead of going home, I entered a restaurant. A friend of mine insisted on setting me up on a blind date after my engagement was broken off. I couldn't refuse. So I agreed. When I arrived, the woman was already there. Her name was Mika. And she was petite and cute. With round apricot eyes that curved like little crescents when she smiled. Hero. You must be hero. Right. Her voice was also very cute. I smiled and nodded. Her way of speaking was playful and interesting, and by the end of the dinner, I was in a much better mood. When we said goodbye, Mika cheerfully handed me a note. If I'm your dream girl, please light up the signal for me. I couldn't help but laugh, putting the note in my pocket. As I left the restaurant, I immediately saw Rena standing nearby. She had already seen Mika leaving earlier. Hearing footsteps, she looked up, her face still streaked with tears. I sighed and reminded her, it's late, you should go home. Rena ignored me and asked blankly. Will you get engaged to her? I frowned, wanting to say not so soon, but after thinking for a moment, yes, if nothing unexpected happens. Rina opened her mouth in hesitation. Then, what about me? You can go find Ryu Meng, or apologize to your family. Her tears started flowing again, crying pitifully, but I only like you, I only want you. I stared at the disheveled Rina and suddenly laughed. It's disgusting to hear you say that. Let me tell you, even if I marry a dog, I would never marry you, Rina. 
as if all her hopes were shattered. Rina's eyes gradually dimmed, not wanting to see her anymore. I immediately turned and left the place. After that, I never saw Rina again. The next time I heard about Rina was on the news. The broadcast's female voice was particularly gentle. The long-missing Miss Rina from the Lin family was found dead at home this morning. Suspected suicide. And I, holding my new bride, had already started a new life. Rina's side story. Hero likes me. I've always known. From the way he looks at me. From his clumsy behavior. I've caught him stealing glances at me more than once. So obvious. So very obvious. Although I don't know why he likes me. But I don't dislike him. I even enjoy his deliberate attempts to please me. After all. Even though his family background isn't good. He's good looking enough. As a woman. Being courted by such a high quality man is quite satisfying. Many men have confessed to me. Almost all of them dressed in suits. Holding roses. Cliché. Boring. Only hero. Whose love letter was almost soaked with the sweat from his palms. I found it funny. Impulsively. I agreed to him. The day I agreed to hero. He cried and laughed. Spinning me around several times. He said he would never let me regret choosing him. Of course. I've never regretted anything. Hero treated me very well. Better than anyone besides my parents. Oh. Maybe even better than my parents. He often worked part-time jobs. Saving every penny to buy me gifts. I told him I didn't need them. That I could buy a lot with my own money. Hero just said that as my boyfriend. It was his duty. He said this and then cried. Feeling he had wronged me. What a fool. I thought no one could be a more qualified boyfriend than him. Even though I didn't like him. After graduating from college. He said he wanted to start a business. To earn a lot of money for me to spend. I thought he was an idiot. But I was a bit bored. So I played along with him. After all. I didn't like him. So I severed ties with my parents and squeezed into a tiny rented room with him. Hero was amazing. Hero was indeed worth it. During the hardest times, he spent all his earnings on me, never buying anything for himself. This fool. I couldn't stand his pitiful yet silent demeanor. So I lowered myself to get a job. The result of working was that my hands were red from the cold. My hands, which I had taken care of for so long, were now frozen and red. I was a bit angry, but seeing Hero's teary, grateful expression, it didn't seem like a loss. Later, I met Ryu Meng. He cried his heart out, saying he couldn't live without me, that he truly loved me. Yes, Ryu Meng and I were meant to be together, but we were forced apart by our families. I loved Ryu Meng. From that day on, I kept seeing Ryu Meng secretly, until the day I went to see him. I got into a car accident. It was incredibly painful. When I opened my eyes again, I was met with Hiro's worried face. I no longer wanted to be with Hiro, but I didn't dare to say it. So, I came up with a good plan. Pretend to have amnesia. There's a term in medicine called selective amnesia. I pretended to remember everyone but him. Hiro looked very sad. I felt a bit guilty. But I had no choice. I wanted to be with Ryu Meng. I didn't understand why Ryu Meng didn't visit me often. But I saw Hiro every day. He made soup and cooked for me. Trying to make me happy. He even stayed up all night during the first few days after I woke up. The more he did this, the guiltier I felt. So I deliberately scolded him. Trying to push him away. But Hiro never left me. On the day of the engagement party, Ryu Meng suggested a plan. Pretend to agree to the engagement. Then run away at the last minute so Hiro would discover that I wasn't really amnesiac. That way, Hiro would definitely stop bothering me. For some reason, hearing this made me feel a bit sad. But I agreed. I didn't want to hurt him too deeply. So I had to do it this way. Sure enough, Hiro stopped bothering me. He personally said he wanted to cancel the engagement. When that moment finally came, I felt more panic than joy. I began to wonder if my decision was really the right one. I truly felt heartbroken when Hiro entered the venue with another woman. Even though I knew I shouldn't. I couldn't help but question him. He said he hated me. I watched his back as he walked away. Feeling lost. My heart ached so much it felt like I was dying. Breaking up with Ryu Meng didn't hurt this much. I gradually realized. I might actually love Hiro. Once I understood my feelings. I felt a sense of relief. I had liked Hiro for a long time. I just hadn't realized it. I thought. Hero once loved me so much, he would forgive me, right? We could definitely go back to how things were, but no. Even though I stayed up several nights to mend the wedding dress he designed, even though I gave up my identity as an heiress, wanting to start over with him, from beginning to end, he never looked back at me, he said I was disgusting, that he'd rather marry a dog than marry me, I didn't understand why the hero who loved me so much had changed, it seemed like he didn't love me anymore, I couldn't believe it, until I saw him with another woman. A gentle smile on his face. That's when I realized. Hero really didn't want me anymore. It was me. Who lost him by my own hand.